Biker hit by an SUV sparking a massive chase in the beating of the driver. Says her husband will never walk again. We're going to show you the scene now from Sunday afternoon, Manhattan's west side. The group of bikers, you know, they're surrounding this black SUV, the Range Rover you see off to your right. Uh, there's a moment there there was a small bump with one of the bikers before that happens. And that's, that's the driver. Uh, he fled the scene, clearly felt that, you know, there was something here that needed him to get out of here. He was with his wife and child uh, in the back seat. The next scene is this when he stops and a gentleman tries to open the car door. That is unsuccessful. Then it was several streets later where this was the end result. One of the bikers smashing the window of the car. The man said to be dragged out. Uh, he was treated for minor injuries. His wife and child stayed inside the car. And all of that was captured on helmet cam. Now, the mother and the wife are talking, and they believe that this man will never walk again. From Fox Boston, there's this. My husband hard took the, 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 the bike away from, you know, the scene because they stopped the highway, walked over to the front of the truck to try to help the guy that got hit. I don't know if that man was scared from whatever the other bikers were doing, but he ran him over. Mm. If you look at the video, you can tell that man ran over something. That something is my husband, who's paralyzed right now in a coma in the hospital room. The family clearly wants charges brought against the driver, so will the driver be charged? Uh, Andrew Napolitano, the judge, senior judicial analyst with me in studio, and good morning to you, morning, sir. Girl. Wow, okay, so I, I don't know, is it self-defense? Or is it road rage? Well, uh, only a jury can, can resolve it. The initial reaction, the initial evaluation by the police is that it was self-defense. There's, there's, there's two aspects of self-defense here. One is the right to flee, to use excessive speed to get away from your tormentors, thereby leaving the scene of an accident and endangering others as you go at a rapid speed, which is what happened here. The other is the right, believe it or not, to use your car offensively to charge back at your tormentors. As I understand it, and a jury may look at this and find it differently, the case won't be tried for a long time. There'll be a civil case, because this guy who lost his legs will certainly sue the driver, and, and lawyers will take discovery, look at the documents and interview witnesses, and then there'll be a trial. But a jury will have to decide who started this and therefore who is responsible for the end I result. See. So you have to go back to the original point of the altercation yes. to figure out how the dominoes work together. And that appears Space. to be the bikers trying to dominate the roadway in a, in a manner that they were not lawfully permitted yeah, to it, do. It would appear. Now, the, the police commissioner has always come out. He's already come out and said, I'm not going to charge the driver the SUV. Right. Uh, he hasn't taken it off the table, but he said, you know, there's a process here. There's an investigation. So what then do you say to the family uh, who's dealing with this man in the hospital now? At what point did this altercation begin? The altercation probably began when the bikers surrounded the car and the driver of the car normally and naturally was terrified at that and attempted to get away, something he has every right to do. Some people have argued, including the lady whose, uh, whose husband is now uh, paralyzed, that he should have stopped at the scene at the time he struck her husband. The police commissioner has argued, and I agree with Commissioner Kelly, that there was no obligation to stop at the scene of an accident when you are reasonably in fear of your own life and in the life of your spouse and your child as well, and there's every right to flee that scene. He eventually stopped and eventually identified himself when, when he was beaten by these bikers. Two quick points. You've tried many of these cases. I mean, you've sat on the bench, right, in New Jersey? Yes, When yes, you had yes, cases yes, like yes, these? Yes, they're enormously And, and you're, you're trying to put the story back together, right? Yes, years later. On the, on the basis, years later. Yes, on the basis of eyewitnesses and forensic evidence to try and figure out who, who knocked over the first domino. I got another point here. These, uh, the NYPD, they're looking for more people. Yes. Who may have been connected. In New Jersey, in your state, the police always pursued those they believe yes, the, might have a yeah, role the, in this. The NYPD, and again my hat is off to Ray Kelly, the NYPD has a policy not to follow these high-speed chases through the city because of danger to innocent bystanders. Just across the mm -hmm. Hudson River, the policy is the opposite. And when innocent oh, bystanders get killed, guess what? There's nobody they can sue. So my takeaway is perhaps not a criminal case. But certainly, but indeed a civil case. Yes. Thank you, Judge. Good Pleasure. to have you back. Pleasure, Good to be with you. All right. Martha, what is next?